This podcast is brought to you from Grantwood AEA, an educational service agency that supports school districts in eastern Iowa with a focus on equity, excellence, and efficiency in education for all children. Welcome to episode 67 of the EdTech Takeout, the podcast that serves up bite-sized technology tips for teachers. My name's Jonathan Wiley, and I'm here again with Mindy Carney. Hello. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah, iTech episode. What? What are we calling this? iTech Reflections. Is that what you're calling this episode? That was the provisional title. Yes. Okay. All right. Episode 67. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, should we do some news and follow-up before we talk about iTech? Sure. All right. Well, I have something. Uh Uh-huh. I was at iTech. Yes. I um, happened to come across someone that I know and totally was like, oh, we should have mentioned one of his podcasts that he does. Well, we talked about podcasts on the last episode. It would have been a natural fit to include this one. It would have. So um, in the category, I would say, of podcasts to listen to, with kids. Yes. Josh Allen does the Oreo Stuff, that's with one F, podcast with his kids, and they review different Oreos. Yeah. And they're real short and sweet. They are. They're fun. They're like 10 minutes or less. Right. So we would like to highly recommend Josh Allen and his kids' Oreo Stuff podcast. You should definitely tune into that. Download, subscribe, leave five star ratings. Yes. And all that good stuff. All of stuff. the good things. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we didn't mention him last week. No, and I just feel terrible about it. You know what he said to me, too? He's like, I know you said on the podcast that um, if anybody got mad, that you shouldn't, that you wouldn't care. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. And I was like, yeah, no, I, I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> but really. It's a sweet little podcast to listen to with your kids, uh, with your students. Give them an idea of, and I, and I, it doesn't seem to me that it probably takes them a ton of time or planning no. or anything like that. It's just something they do as a family, quick. But um, just be a good example for your students to listen to if they're looking to start up a podcast themselves. And if you have a family podcast similar to this one that you would like to share, <laughs> let us know. Yeah. We'll do a little thirty second ad spot Absolutely. for you too. Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Yeah, that's what we're here for. Yep. So what else is new in news and follow-up? Well, this one was brand new to me. So when we were at iTech, we uh, did a section on um, Wakelet. And you brought to my attention that Screencastify can integrate directly into Wakelet by turning it on in your Wakelet setting. So you have to have the Screencastify... um, Help me out. Chrome extension. Oh, boy. Chrome extension. Um, And then you go into your settings and turn that on so that when you create a Screencastify video, it will ask you if you want to share it directly into Wakelet. Correct. Yeah. So that was a good one. I didn't even know that existed. So I'm not sure if it's new, but it's new to me. I would say it's new to me, too. Yeah. But uh, I think it's one of those things, if you didn't hear about it and you don't regularly dig around in, like, your profile settings, then you're never going to know it was there. That's where you hang out, right? In your profile settings? Sure. Just always lurking around in there. Checking out my profile. Reading terms and conditions. (laughs) Yeah, all that good stuff. (laughs) Uh, what else did we put in that presentation? Uh, we because it, it was mm-hmm. kind of a podcast theme presentation, wasn't it? It was called "Wait, What Did I Miss?" And yeah. uh, we did some like news and follow up type yeah. items from the summer. Yep. Uh, one of those recent ones was quizzes now has a redemption mode for students. Right. So if and we tested this out, and I think yeah. it's a little bit randomized, but I think if you miss like two or more questions. It will give you the option to go back and uh, redeem yourself right. by having another go at one of those questions. But right, you get to choose your question, right? That you wanted to yes. spend a little bit. It's, it's been a minute since we've done it, but I think that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. And you had to choose, you can only choose like one from a selection, basically. You couldn't just select them all and redeem yourself completely, right. but uh, you had the chance to uh, win back some points. Right. Yeah. So if you're a quizzes user, You've probably seen that already. If you haven't used quizzes for a little while and you're Mm -hmm. thinking, maybe I should go back and try it out, then this might be a a fun thing to do. Yeah, I don't ever know much about quizzes because I don't have, like me personally, I don't have a purpose for it because I don't, you know what I mean? So that one's always tricky for me. I hear stuff about it and I'm like, oh, that's really nice, but I don't ever use quizzes ever. But I know people really like it a lot. And on that theme. Yeah. (laughs) 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I talked about this in the podcast last time, I think, uh-huh. but um, I applied to the, get the rubrics beta for right. Google Classroom. Yeah. And I got a nice email saying, hey, you've been accepted into the beta. Yeah. And then there was so, not, nothing there. Oh. But it, it has suddenly appeared. And oh, it appeared, well, how do you think of it? What do you think of it? Well, it appeared the day after <laughs> we did our presentation at <laughs> iTech. I thought, well, this is oh, shoot. great, a day yeah. late. Um, and yeah, it works exactly the way I expected it would. It still has the limitations that uh, you have to create the rubrics every single time. So dumb. Yeah. That's so dumb. I'm hoping people leave some feedback yeah, for that right. and get you gotta that one sorted. you got to complain and make it some change, right? But yes, so I have it. But it's one of those things, like you said, I don't have a classroom full of students, so mm-hmm. I don't uh, create that many uh, rubrics on a regular basis. Right. But when I'm showing it to teachers, I can at least show them where it is. Yeah, sure. So um, I guess we could put the links again in there if you missed them to sign up for the rubrics beta or what's the other one? The originality reports. Originality reports. Mm-hmm. People are liking that, I think. Are they? Yeah. I've been over at Cedar Rapids and yeah. they've got that beta turned on and the teachers like that one. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I keep forgetting to tell them, you know, that after the beta is done, you only get three per course. But yeah. Maybe they'll change that too. Maybe that's maybe part of the beta and they'll hear maybe some feedback. Maybe it is. I hope that's the case. I hope so. Yeah. All right, up next, main course today, iTech Reflections. So iTech is our state technology conference. It's an ISTE affiliate. Is that right. how you would describe that it? That is correct. And that's how they have a fall conference every year that we go to. We have done podcasts live from iTech in the past. We have. But we didn't podcast We this didn't year. get invited this year. We did not. They, <laughs> they used to have this podcast pavilion yeah. where people used to set up podcasts and students would come yep. to. Yep, yep. John Rogers used to bring all these kids and yeah. things over, but uh, no podcast pavilion this year. Right. But uh, we're going to do a post-iTech reflection. Right. So it was a special year this year because it was the 50th anniversary of iTech. Yes, it was. And so, um, interestingly enough, they were running um, pictures on like a slideshow of iTech's past. And it was just, it was kind of shocking to me. Like they brought in all of these old Macs and like had them all set up and all these teachers were sitting down. I yeah. and Like in my, I don't know what I was imagining iTech would have been like, you know, 25 years ago, but Wow. 50 years. Can you imagine having to set up all of those computers? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Well, I, yeah, I do vaguely remember that back in the early part of my career. But, yeah, uh, yeah computer labs and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, right, but right. They but, had some special yeah, guests. Yeah. We had uh, the Iowa governor, uh, Kim Reynolds, came yeah. and did a, a little introduction speech. I think that was on Monday. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Ryan Wise, friend of the show, right, <laughs> director of education for Iowa. He was the kind of a guest speaker on Tuesday, right. And they also had a video message from Steve Wozniak, yeah, which I thought was kind of cool. Right, Who knew? so he met his wife at iTech. I think that's Is what that he said. What he said, yes. <laughs> She's an educator as well, right? Yeah. Right. So I thought that was cute. That was certainly a, a fun thing to yeah, have. Yeah, sure. One of the iTech board members reached out to him when he did a uh, recorded Joe Wakeman yes he recorded a video call for us um, with Steve Wozniak Mm -hmm. and that was a a fun thing to see yeah it was Mm -hmm. Um, so on Monday Jenny McGuire was there am I saying her last name right I think so yes okay she was keynote yeah she was the keynote on Monday Um, and I thought she had an interesting and I would say both um, both keynotes kind of ran the same theme of sorts but um, hers was about telling untold stories yes, and how important it is to acknowledge that everyone has an untold story and somehow allowing those stories to be told. And so she worked through her life um, in different times that her untold story was told or um, talked about students and things like that. I thought it was um, – she – She's a great storyteller. I felt mm-hmm. like I really kind of went along on the journey with her. Um, but yeah, just I think it was very interesting to ta- to I think have her kind of reveal how when someone's untold story is revealed, it changes their life from that point forward. Yeah, you know, it's like a turning point in your life. Um, 
So I, I think thought that was interesting. Yeah, and I think it's something that probably most teachers can relate to as well. Yeah. I mean, you think about number of kids and class sizes these days and things like yeah. that. And when we were teaching, you know, yeah. you typically will spend a lot of time with the same type of students over and over. And mm -hmm. then there's there's usually a few that get some not lost in the mix, but just yeah, get right. less attention yeah. and the ones you don't always spend as much time with sometimes yeah. for whatever reason. And um and and just that whole idea of, you know, what a student's like outside of the classroom. When mm -hmm. they go back home, yeah. what is their life like? I mean, we sometimes take for granted or forget that, you know, not yeah. everybody has an optimal home life and things like that too. Well, and especially, you know, when you're in the classroom and you're in that moment every single day, I mean, it becomes kind of a grind, right? I mean, you love your job, hopefully, but it does become just the grind of the everyday in and outs of things and really taking the time to connect with those students or finding ways for them to, to share their story. Um, one of the things that she said that really stuck with me, she was talking about how um, she had a teacher when she was a child that um, she wanted to be just like when she grew up uh, to be a teacher herself. So when she went to her... Um, teacher to tell her that she had gotten her, her teaching job and she was talking about how badly she wanted to be just like her. She said to her, but Jenny, if you are me, who will be you? And I think that's such an interesting um, thing to think about as teachers because a lot of times, I mean, we're on Pinterest, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we're seeing all these things happening in other classrooms. And that's, I mean, that's the pull of social media anyway. And we start to measure ourselves against things that we see um, or things that we think we should be doing that if we try so hard to be someone else or mimic what someone else is doing, we lose sight of what makes us a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. makes us the best teacher for those kids in that classroom. So I just think it's an interesting thing to kind of keep in your mind all of the time. Like I cannot continue to compare myself to the person next door. I have to be me. And this has to, you know, I have to be the best me for my kids in my classroom. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. Great message. And I, I, I wish someone had said that to me as a beginning teacher, oh, too, because yeah. I know I spent my first few years teaching, yeah. teaching the way that I was taught or the, yeah. I, or trying to be the teachers that, you know, I had when I was a student. So, yeah, yeah great advice. I had a, just a, a younger teacher say to me not that long ago, something along the manner of... I'm sure I'm doing this, but I'm sure it's not the right way to do it. And I said, you know what? We're all just trying to get by. You know, yep. you, you, you've got to do what's best for you and what you think is right for these kids. And we're all just trying. And the best thing is, is to continue to give it a shot and see what happens and, and learning from that. But don't ever think that you're not measuring up to what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. So <laughs> Thank you. Thank Jenny McGuire is the chief program officer for the EdTech team. Oh, okay. If you get the chance to see her at a conference near you, I would definitely uh, recommend mm -hmm. checking it out. Mm -hmm. Keynote number two, though, was Joe Sanfilippo. Yeah. Who was um, very different in style, yeah. I think. I yeah. mean, Jenny was very controlled and calm mm -hmm. and <laughs> forceful about getting her points through and right. Joe was like high energy <laughs> 100 miles yeah. an hour right. and yes but he said like three million words in that hour and a half maybe yeah. yes he speaks really fast yes but he kept you I think he really kept you engaged the whole time he kept you yeah. on the edge of your seat he kept you two inches away from your person sat next to you at one point yeah so yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah lots of uh Great messages from him. Obviously, he, he spends a lot of his time talking about how to brand your school and right. have your school show uh, in the best possible light and mm -hmm. working with the community and or being part of a community. He's from a, a district of like, was it like 800 yeah, right. students or something K -12, like that? K-12, 800. K-12, yeah, 800 right. mm -hmm. students. Yeah. And uh, but he says he's got you know pe he's got people wearing their school merchandise Go all crickets. over the country. Yeah. Go crickets. Go crickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen him before? I had not seen him before, but yeah. I have read his book. Yeah. Oh, um, or at least one book. of his books. Yeah. Yes. Huh. He. Um, yeah, I think his his biggest message too is and and I don't know that this is completely original to Joe, but it's still a great message. Is that 
if you don't tell your school's story, they'll fill in the gaps, yeah. right? So they'll they'll tell their own story and they'll tell the story from 25 years ago, especially in small districts like that where um, maybe a lot of the people living in that town are, are kids that grew up there and they're still um, upset about the fact that they had to eat pizza every Friday or the coach didn't play them enough. And so um, history can definitely play into how people feel about your school district or there might be mistakes that were made in the past that people just won't let die and how important it is to continue to tell your story because you will make mistakes and you will fall on your face. The important thing is, is that there's enough good stories out there that hopefully you're, the people around in your community will rally around you even because of those mistakes because you're doing such a great job of sharing the good things that are happening. Definitely. Yeah, he's he's a big proponent of social media. I, I really enjoyed seeing like, you know, he would show examples of like the type of posts that his district had up there. Right. And, and he's always, you know, embracing that and into the effect that not always the posts that you think are going to be the most popular ones are going to be the most popular ones. Like the right. most popular post on their Instagram was that, that like the homecoming day where the kids all drove to school in tractors yes, or something. And yeah. that was the mm-hmm. one that like broke Instagram for them. Yeah. But then he always also does those really fun like snow day announcements yeah, and things right. as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's really embracing that whole um, social media culture, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. But if you get a chance to see him, I would highly recommend it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. It was two great keynotes this year at ITEC. I think they're the best back-to-back keynotes that I've ever seen. Mm. I feel like a lot of times you go to like conference and you're like, oh, that one was keynote good. was yeah. fantastic. And I really felt like with these two back-to-back, I was like, wow, they really hit it out of the park this year, I yeah. thought. Yeah. So here's right. a reflection I also had from iTech. Okay. I, I don't know if you've had time to read my blog post. I did yet. read your blog did post, you? actually. It wasn't even today. Oh, wow. I know. I, I know, I thought right? you'd read it on the day of the podcast recording. I did not read it today. Uh-uh. Yeah, so I had a kind of reflection as well because um, and I think we had – was it Bill Bass that came from ISTE mm-hmm. to do um, – and he talked about uh, giving Devin the, yeah. um, the Making It Happen Award. Right. One of the things he was talking about, he said he looked over the, the conference schedule and he saw a really interesting mix of different types of sessions. Right. And – I agree. I think there was uh-huh. different types of sessions. And when you think back about some of these conferences that we've been to, for a while there, we started a few years ago with like 50 apps and yeah. 50 minutes sort right. of thing. Right. And then there was a bit of a backlash against that for a while. And then people said, no, we can't talk about tools all the time. Yeah. We need to talk about the pedagogy. We right. need to make sure that technology is being used properly. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like we're going <laughs> back just a little bit again because yeah. I think there's – a increasing number of people that okay we've got the pedagogy but i still need to know yeah some tools that will help me implement this as well like some coaches some i don't know people like you and me who go to these things that can probably think about you know ways to use things as soon as you see it sure yeah i mean we'll Mm -hmm. come across things on social media all the time and go oh yeah that'd be fantastic for this or that or whatever and we pick that up quickly and i'm not saying we should go back to like those 60 and 60 sessions necessarily but I don't know. Hmm. What, what do you think? Is there a is there a room for like a hybrid in between kind of thing or not? I know. I think this is interesting too because um, I always think that the sessions that I try to do hopefully talk a little bit about integration. But then at the other time, at the other hand, like you're saying, is you go to a tech conference probably because you want the tech, right? Yeah. Like you're going because you want to know more about the technology. And I know Amber and I kind of talked about this while we were there, too. And she said, you know, when I got the chance to get out of the classroom and go to iTech, I was like, just give me the tools. Give me all of the tools and I will go home and I will wade through this myself. I just I need to know the tools so I can see if they'll work for me or if they won't. However, I think it just depends on who you are and your comfort level, too. So I think there is a place for going super slow through some of those sessions and, like, talking through the pedagogy. I just don't – I don't know. Are we still at the point where people need to – 
I don't know, hear about the correct way to integrate things? I don't know. I don't know if we are. I think there's always going to be people that need that sure. in some ways. Either okay. people that haven't heard it the first time around or maybe there are, there are new teachers that haven't always mm-hmm. had that background at whatever college they went mm-hmm. to. But mm-hmm. yeah, it, it is it's tough to get a balance. But I, th- I think maybe the exception to the rule is there are certain things that end up in the ed tech world that are not necessarily originally meant for ed tech. Mm-hmm. And for those types of things, I personally need a little bit more help yeah. thinking, okay, so how would I use that with kids? Okay, sure. I know why Apple or whoever created this, yeah. but they didn't create it for our teachers. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I'm thinking like AR, VR stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, oh, I know. <laughs> You can you can get into things like that, and yeah. it wasn't it's not being created for AR for education, but it's starting to come into education more and more. Right, and I just need a little bit more help making sure that it's done authentically and that it's yeah. not just hey, look at this cool tool I it know. made the dinosaur on my desk. Okay, well that's great, but yeah, right. You know, I agree that wow factor to me. That's what I think is tough at those um, tech conferences is when we see things that are just being shown for the wow factor of things. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think those things can be distracting. They be distracting. They were distracting for me for quite a while. I played with AR stuff with Amber. I mean, we played for like three weeks with it, trying to figure out where our stance was on it, you know, and how we found it could be integrated. And I mean, we got really caught up in just the coolness of it. Um, but And that's where I get worried as people spend a lot of money to go to conferences like that. And then... Are they, you know, are we distracting them with just wow tools instead of really useful, powerful tools that will really make a difference in a classroom? Yeah. Is that my soapbox? No, okay. not at all. <laughs> I think that's an ongoing discussion to yeah. keep, you know, to be aware of and have at the back of your mind for yeah. sure with this stuff. Right. I think the other thing, especially as a presenter, that's kind of tricky, um, and I'm sure it is for people who are attending it too, is, you know, we we want to model what we... We want to model what we want to see. Yeah, what we want to see. But at the same time, a lot of times when you're a teacher, you should know your kids, right? And know um, what style will work best for them. When you're a presenter or leading a session or facilitator or whatever, you have like 40 strangers coming in. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about their background knowledge. You don't know anything about their learning style. And yet you have to try and meet the needs of all of those people. And you might have someone who's never used technology and is just looking to get started um, as opposed to, I don't know, like you walking in right. at the top of your field. And how do we, <laughs> how do we, it's hard. It's hard to put those two people next to one another, right? And and still have them leaving with something. So I just think it's tricky. It's tough. It's really tough. You stole my thunder for the next one, Wendy. <laughs> I stole it on purpose. I saw you put that I on know. there. <laughs> so I was going to ask, what type of sessions do you like to attend when you go to a conference? Because, I mean, you're not a classroom teacher. I'm not a classroom no, teacher. Right. And some of the people that listen to this podcast are like coaches and, yeah, sure. and other types of people like that. And I don't know. I mean, there are so many different types of presentations mm-hmm. now. There's the lecture type things where you sit and get. Mm-hmm. And there's panel type things. Right. I know Lynn. Nope, pass. Lynn is, Lynn is very keen on the panel yep, type discussions. I pass on panels. Yep. You, you don't like panels? Nuh-uh. Like, what about those ones that are, like, discussion-based, where you yep. come in and they, they give you a prompt and they say, okay, five minutes for the person next to you. I'm pass on those, and, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a big fan? I'm not. Well, you know what? Although I would take that back because I, um, I am a huge fan of Bob Dylan. Oh, um, yeah. Dr. Robert Dylan is what I should say. So people, yes. yes. Um, and, you know, his sessions are kind of like that, too, where he, it is very discussion, but he also kind of leads you through, you know, his experience and stuff. But he does a really good job, I think, if not the best job I've ever seen anyone do as far as leading those discussions and getting people up and moving without it being super weird and, like, kind of uncomfortable mm-hmm. and forced. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he does it, but he does that very well. And so... Um, going to a session by him, I'm totally happy with a discussion. Um, that's fine with me. I actually, I kind of prefer set and get, and I, I, I know that that's not the right thing to say, but that's what I like. No, I, I like those two. I don't like to get up and move around and yeah. like, nope, that's not why I'm here. I yeah. am here. just, just give me the, just give me give the, me the stuff. information. Yeah. Plug it into my brain yep. and I will process it and yeah. take it from there. But I do, 
um, I do prefer it not to be so fast paced that I can't kind of, although we know multitasking is not really a thing, Mm -hmm. to kind of be listening and playing with something that maybe is new to me, but still slow enough pace that I can kind of keep my ear on what's going on. Like, do I need to listen to this or do I already know this thing or whatever? So I am not a huge fan of the 50 and 50 sort of thing or 3000 tech tools in 62 minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, and I don't, I don't think that that's best practice anyway. I'm just going to just toss that out there. Well, we should have had the soapbox out I know, get the soapbox out again. Yeah. Yeah. And I I feel like there maybe could or maybe should be more like kind of hands-on type sessions too. And I know they'd start to do things like that with playgrounds and stuff like that too. But I don't know. I think there's something Mm -hmm. to be said for like guiding people through a facilitated experience of some type of tool or i don't know technique or something you want to try there yeah. i don't see many of those or sometimes they're like extra sessions that you have to like sign up for at ISTE. i think ISTE you have to like um sign up for those uh extra one hour hands sessions on. well um, yeah. it's getting that way now <laughs> yeah, almost is, yeah, yeah for sure yeah um i do think it's really important though um if you are looking through and trying to decide what sessions you go to that you really do kind of pay attention to whether it's a beginner's level or advanced level i mean you went to like Mm -hmm. a spreadsheet one that you yes that you're a beginner in spreadsheets are you yeah are you are you still Um, considering yourself a beginner are you i'm rising slowly from the bottom of that barrel yes yes but you were like yeah it was a lot yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was for me, but yeah. for other people in the room, maybe right. not as I much. Know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. So I think it's just really because I have had people come to sessions before and like in the session description, I might say something like must have working knowledge of Seesaw. And then someone will raise their hand. I'm like, oh, do you have a Seesaw account? Nope. This is the first I've ever heard of it. And that's super hard to reach those people, too. So just making sure that you read those descriptions <laughs> so yes. you know what to expect. We as presenters try to give you the best idea we right. can. I mean, sometimes we only have it's like 150 words or less for your description yeah, or something right. like that. And so we yeah. put as much in as we can. But, but as a yeah, presenter, yeah, a you should be them. very clear about what you're doing. Definitely. But also make sure you're reading the descriptions, too. Mm-hmm. Helps you have a better experience. And get out if you need to get out. Yes. I mean, that's always, they say that's like the Ed Camp rule, like vote yeah. with your feet. And yep. I think I put this in that blog post. It was like, I personally, I'm not going to be offended if you get up and walk out of my session. No, I, I, I will be, but. Yes, Mindy <laughs> might be, but I won't be. I feel like, you know, if this yeah. isn't the information that you need right now, yeah. that's fine. Don't yeah, sit it's here. it's nobody's fault, right. Yeah, you're not ready for it, or you already know it, or it wasn't yeah. what you expected. Yeah. Go find another one. I personally will go through a conference schedule and I'll put like two or three for each session and I'll pick one. And Usually the one I'm going to. Sometimes the one. Yeah, we (laughs) we usually travel in pairs. We sometimes end up as conference buddies. We do, yeah. And then uh, if it's not working out, then I'll go pick another one and uh, go somewhere else. And I think it's okay to bounce around too, like just to go for a little bit in one session, get a couple things and, and hit another one, not because you think like oh this isn't what i wanted but if you want to see as much as you can i think it's okay to stay for 20 minutes and then hit the last half of another one just sure. being very aware of what the description is too like is it something i can come in halfway through is it a discussion one or a panel one if that's the case mm-hmm. yeah hit the last 20 minutes but yeah sure yeah yeah good idea yeah any other tips for uh conference goers mindy that you would uh, throw in there um, Apart from wearing comfortable shoes and uh, oh, I don't do that. Hydrating and mm, very important. Yeah, battery pack. Um, so this is the first time I've done. I've used Wakelet during a conference. You used it to curate like I did. slides and resources from yeah, presenters. Yeah, I pulled stuff from. Okay. Um, I've never done that before. Yeah, so I pulled stuff from um, the Twitter feed. So things sessions that I didn't go to, but I saw um, stuff shared out. I put it on there. I also. Um, pulled things, a couple different things here and there from sessions that I saw and added them in, which was super helpful for today. So how did you pull things in from Twitter? Are you doing it like from the app and just going share to Wakelet? I did. Or, yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're using TweetDeck and no, or different uh-uh, things. No, I did or... it. I didn't, I didn't open up my computer at all except for when you and I presented. Yeah, me too. I, I only my used my phone. I didn't even use my iPad. I oh. used my phone the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Well, news and update. I got a new phone. 
<laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Finally. We missed that earlier. Yeah, uh, yeah, so I just, yeah, so I just used my phone the whole time, and it was super nice. Like, I set my bag down in our team's room, and I walked mm-hmm. around with my phone the whole time and didn't tote a bag or anything. It was awesome. Yeah, it is fun just to go mobile with a mobile device, that's yeah. for sure. going mobile with a mobile device. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Up next, serve to you piping hot tech nuggets. I have three nuggets. You know, which is kind of baloney because... One is a baloney nugget. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) My nugget is a baloney. You're like, I don't have any nuggets. I don't have any nuggets. I don't have any nuggets, Mindy. And now you've got three. Yeah, I got three. The heck? Okay. One's like a little, just a PSA, and I'm probably the last to find out. So why don't we start with that one? Okay, let's play. Google prompt. Okay, I don't know this. You do know this because we talked about this. <laughs> and you were like, well, I knew about that. Oh, seriously? So, two factor authentication. I don't know what it's called. Yes. Two factor oh, authentication yes. on your Google account uh, yes. is often forced by your domain or your school district. Yes. And you have to sign up. And usually you get like a little code that goes to your phone. And then you have to type in the code. Now, I don't know if it's my phone, my cell phone provider, <laughs> uh, or what. It's but, you, I don't know. Or just me. Maybe. But the codes don't always come in in a tiny Manner is okay. what I would say. Okay. And so usually it's when I'm, I don't know, doing a PD or something, and I ha- yeah. I'm all signed out for some reason, and I mm-hmm. have to sign back in, and I'm like, "Come on, code, come yeah. quicker." Yeah. And it doesn't appear. So uh, there is another alternative to signing in with two-factor authentication. In fact, there's several, but uh, one of them is called Google Prompt. And when you activate that in your Google account, all you have to do is open the Gmail app on your phone. And it says, someone is trying to access your account. And you click the button that says, it's me. And then you're in. Mine doesn't even show. Mine shows up as a notification. I only have to go into my Gmail app. Oh, I don't have. It shows up on a notification. And I just put, like, yeah, yeah, like, turn it it on or whatever, you know. And then it opens. It automatically opens into my Gmail. Yes. but Well, that's a good tip because I don't have notifications turned on for Gmail app. so. So I just turned on only priority email notifications. Mm. Did you see that come, on, come across? No, because I use the Apple Mail app uh, mostly, so I don't okay, never mind then. use the Gmail but app. Yeah, so but yeah, so I don't. I only get notifications like if it's a personal email now. The other way you can um, authenticate, a two-factor authentication, did you know you can buy these like USB keys and you can plug them in to your device no. when you're logging in Why and it I will just that? like... Oh recognize that piece of hardware as what? yours mm-hmm. and it authenticates it as like a second thing that somebody would have to have to log into your account it's yeah. like a usb it's flash like a drive key. yeah well it's like Is a usb yeah. flash drive they get usb key or whatever yeah. they call it and you just plug it into your computer and it says yes this is jonathan's key you don't have any more ports where am i supposed to put that yeah i know I it, MacBook. you can get usb c ones as yeah. well that will okay. fit in those ports but yes so there you go, Google Prompt. Okay. Check it out. Google Prompt. All right. Um, so this is super funny. Uh, I had a post-it note. Um, I was digging for something weird the other day, like some odd request I had. And that's usually when I find tech nuggets, right? You're yep. like, what do I have to look for? Okay. Anyway, on um, this is like two weeks ago. So I came back to work today, sat down, was like, hmm, tech nuggets. Now what am I going to do? And um, on my post-it, I find teacherled.com. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder what this is in my handwriting. <laughs> so, okay. In your handwriting? Yeah, it's in my, in my own handwriting. So I click on teacherled.com or I type it in. Here it comes. And it's interactive math manipulatives. What I would say is this is a really good time to remind you that Toy Theater has amazing math manipulatives. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to remind people of that. If you have not checked out Toy Theater, go there now. Um, but also, this one has um, three different categories of manipulative. So num- numeracy basics, um, regular manip- manipulatives, and then the challenges. And I actually went into the challenges today because I hadn't, I actually didn't, I clicked on, I put this in and it didn't even look familiar to me. It was like, I know this is my handwriting. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. The only thing I don't like about the challenges um, is that they're timed. And there's pretty good research, I believe, around time and math. 
Uh-huh. And they shouldn't go together. You should not yeah. be timing your kids um, on, on any math challenges whatsoever. I know our math consultants aren't big fans of that. No, they're not. So I don't like that part of it. But um, the other parts, the numeracy basics and the manipulatives, are good, good, solid online tools. You can use them on your mobile device as well. Um, yeah. I don't know if they're as great as... Um, Toy theater. I do think that in the numeracy basics, something that I saw in there that I had not seen before is that uh, they have a hundreds chart, but it goes to negative numbers. Oh, okay. I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't mm. know that I've ever seen that mm-hmm. before. So it might be something that you might want to, you know, take a look at if you are needing something like interactive math manipulatives. So do you think this was something that came up when you were researching a Promethean board PD? <laughs> I'm almost certain that's where that post it yeah, came because from. Because I'm looking at these thinking yeah. that these would be good on an interactive whiteboard. Yeah. And I know you did some PD recently on Promethean boards. Yes. So if anybody needs uh, help with a Promethean board, Mindy is the person to go to. I don't know if I'm the person, but I do have some resources now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So math manipulatives. Yeah. I like it. Teacherled.com. Uh, okay. My second of three tech nuggets. We got it. Three. Yep. Move it along. What else? I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Corey Rogers on our team. I don't think she's talked about this on the podcast. She's been on the podcast, but um, she will show you this (laughs) without too much prompting (laughs) because she loves this. And I like it too. It's called Unfold Studio. Mm -hmm. And she was working with a student from Stanford Mm -hmm. who created this and it is basically a choose your own adventure style um, app that uses um, coding Mm -hmm. in order to make it work. So you're basically writing if then type statements in order to create a choose your own adventure story. Mm -hmm. Um, So if uh, the person clicks here then they go to this part of the story. If they click there then it goes to that part of the story. And they've got some templates that are built in uh, to help you get started so you don't have to start from scratch. And I know Corey has lots of um, good resources on this Mm -hmm. but if you want to create a branching story um, you can do that inside of the unfold.studio uh, website. Yeah, I think it, what's great about it, and I am going to not know anything about this at all, but from my understanding, it says low floor, high ceiling. So even if you have very little coding confidence at all, like Wiley had said with the if-then statements, that's, I mean, it's really the easiest way to start. Mm-hmm. Did you go to their session? I went to her session when she did it at one of my school districts oh, recently. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I would like to see it. That's a good one, though. It is a good one. I took it home yeah. to uh, my yeah. my daughter. But yeah. yeah, and she she had a quick play with it, too. I mean, yeah. you can even do things like like uh, text message conversations. And yeah. it looks like an iPhone text message uh, yeah. back and forward. Nice. And you just change the different parts, choose what you would like to say in the conversation and, and have that go through. You can share these with other people. You can copy other people's as templates. Nice. True. It's good. So unfold.studio. Okay. Um, my next and last tech nugget, um, actually, I, I Beth is the one who shared this with me, but I think it came from Mandy Froelich, who was also at iTech. Um, and the age-old three before me, did you have this rule in your classroom? Yes. Ask three before me. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I've never heard that before. It's for when teachers are working in small groups and they need to be working with their small groups and the rest of the class to be in independent time. And the rule is that you have to ask three before you can come and ask me, the teacher. It goes alongside the other rule of if you have blood, barf, or broken bones, (laughs) then Then come and see me. Yeah, otherwise I don't want to see you. I'm busy. Even then, I mean, let's really think about it. Anyway, Yeah. um, so what Mandy suggested was adding it with a tech twist and and, um, having ask YouTube, Google, and a friend before the teacher. So that's what her ask three before me was. I thought that mm. was something different. I like that idea. Mm-hmm. I kind of do too. I'm not a huge fan, depending on, but I am an elementary teacher. So whenever I see Ask Google, I get a little antsy, but, um, and YouTube as well. But I do think that it's, uh, it's, it's a really great idea to find a way to find extra information that might be outside of the classroom um, before having to ask your teacher again. 
I think if you yeah. have some supports in there and you've right. talked to your kids about right. digital literacy, yes. how to evaluate sources, right. and Mindy wrote a great blog post on that recently. I didn't write about... Um, oh, it was about researching. It was about and, researching and, with yes. little kids, but so. not about the navigating, like good resources <laughs> yes so <laughs> if you have those type of structures in place then yeah. i think that would work well for yeah. that there and I especially like when they get up to middle high school you know mm -hmm. you want them to be more independent oh, sure. anyway and you know this is a the world i guess in high school kids are doing this anyway right yeah i mean aren't they youtubing Probably. and googling everything that's how i get paid every day youtube mm -hmm. <laughs> google yep <laughs> without those two skills Unemployable. Unemployable. <laughs> I'd be, I don't know, on my couch right now. Yep. Oh. <laughs> All right, my right. third yes. tech nugget. Nuggety, nuggety. We are approaching the holiday season. We are. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Christmas, whatever other. Halloween. Halloween, <laughs> yes. Um, That's the closest, actually. <laughs> should start with that one. Yeah, I? that's should right. With that one. I was surprised you didn't lead with that one, but continue. We're okay. approaching the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Plural. <laughs> And I think this is the time of year that I remember things start to get a little bit crazy. From here mm -hmm. on down to the end of the year, teachers get stressed mm -hmm. and worked up and mm -hmm. they've got a million and one things to do. So um, there is an app um, available um, for mobile devices called Headspace. Okay. And Headspace is for improving the health and happiness of the world. One educator at a time. So it's about um, meditation and mindfulness and trying to bring some calmness into your life. Mm -hmm. And so yes. Head, Headspace normally costs um, a, a subscription. Money. Oh. So it's a paid service normally. If you go to the App Store and you just look it up and go Headspace, it's going to oh. charge you so much money. Okay. However, oh. Headspace offers free access to all K-12 teachers, school oh. administrators, and like supporting that? staff in the U.S., U.K., Canada and Australia. Mm. So I will link to a little feedback uh, form where you, you can. Play it? Can you play a little tidbit here? Are I could play, play a little tidbit here. So just making sure that you're sitting comfortably. We're going to start with the eyes open. Just taking a moment to pause to take in the space around you. And then when you're ready, just taking a big deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. In fact, just take a couple of breaths like that, aware of the body expanding as it takes in the air. So the benefits include helping educators live healthier, happier lives, inspiring educators to build and deepen their personal mindfulness practices and providing guidance to support educators to foster mindfulness in their classrooms. What do you think about all that, Mindy? It sounds really nice. You know, there's somebody here at Grant Wood that teaches mindfulness. Did you know there's, that? No. No, you can. I think it's after hours, like at 4.30, 5 o'clock. They have a class where you can go and think about being more mindful. It's easy just to drive yourself insane at this time of year and just even some kind of uh, realization of where you are and what you have going on just to put all your ducks in a row. If if this helps with that, then yeah. I think people need I it. am a very lucky person that I don't normally stress or worry about anything. It's probably also a personality flaw. I'm not sure where it lands. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so the mindfulness thing sometimes gets lost on me because I am just I'm just you know, I don't. <laughs> well, should we wrap it up then, yeah, Mindy? Let's. Feels like we've talked long enough. Yeah. <laughs> Been at this for a while. Did uh, you say anything good today? <laughs> no idea. By the time I cut out all the bad stuff, probably not. It'll very be fine. Much. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I am Team Carney on Twitter, and Jonathan is at Jonathan Wiley. Our team account is DLGWAEA, and you can use our hashtag EdTechTakeout to take the show. If you prefer, you can send us an email to podcast at gwaa.org. So, until next time. This has been the EdTech Takeout. We hope it hit the spot. For more information on today's episode, please visit dlgwaea.org slash podcast. Podcast.